Hey folks, welcome back to another video. In yesterday's video, we talked about synchronizing melodies to drum grooves, and today it's about delays, because delays can sometimes be a problem in certain situations. So let's imagine you have here this straight melody playing on this polymer synth. It sounds like this. So it's pretty straight, there's no shuffle or anything, and we can add here, let's say, a delay one, a bit of feedback, a bit of mix. And it sounds much better because the melody in itself is straight and the delay taps are playing or playing back everything that's in the buffer pretty straight and dead on with 60 notes. Right? So, um, now, if you enable basically here the global groove setting, a bit of shuffle, 50%, one eight note, it sounds like this. So it doesn't sound that great anymore because you overlay this shuffled melody line here, pattern, with a pretty much dead on straight delay taps that are still in um, in the normal grid, let's say in the unshuffled grid, right? It's pretty much dead on and um, you overlay this nice groove with a straight pattern of delay taps. So that's why it sounds a bit off and that's why I usually, when I do some funky stuff, I don't use delays that much. Um, you can use delays, of course, but you have to dial them a bit back here. So you don't destroy actually the groove of your um, of your pattern, right? Um, so what I want to do in this video is I want to recreate basically a delay inside of the grid that is shuffled or that uses the global shuffle setting. So here we use an FX grid and we select the FX grid and on the left side you can see under device phase we have your shuffle settings. So we can enable this. So now everything inside of the grid that uses the device phase is actually using also the global groove setting here or shuffle setting. So inside of the grid now we can use a recorder as our delay buffer and we want to create let's say a feedback loop. So we do this here with a long delay and we don't use a long delay for the buffer. We just dial this down to the minimum setting here, but we need to use a long delay to actually connect here the output to the input um, of the blend. So now we have here basically some kind of feedback loop already running. We can also use an amplify here so we can overdo the feedback. Uh, and make it self-resonating at one point if we want to. And then we need something to re-trigger here, the recording and the playback. So what we can do is we can use, of course, the device phase here, which is shuffled, and use a scalar. And I like to use the scalar because uh, we have here a phase output and a gate output at the same time. So I know you can just multiply this here and use a wrapper and so on, but I, I like to use the scalar for that here in this situation. Um, logic and comparison. So we want to compare basically the output of this with zero because the second input jack here is empty, so it's zero. So when the input here is zero, it's the same, then we get here a gate, so we re-trigger. And the phase is of course always in the beginning zero, so we re-trigger at the beginning of the device phase here. And then we can increase here the ratio and we can use the output of that to re-trigger and record uh, the delay buffer. And we can use the device phase here to shape the volume. So we use a multiply to change the volume and we use a curve. And I really like to use a curve because you can shape the shape, which is nice. I really like this. Um, I know you can use a window, but with the window you have basically this fixed curve. Um, so we go in this here, 100%, and we switch this to hold. And now we can use the output of the curves here as a 
multiply si signal to change the volume here of the output of that. So now it sounds like this. So we can bring in the dry signal here. You can play around with the ratio here, but if you go down, right, um, the longer it records and the longer it takes to play it back. And the problem with that is that you basically get rid of all the groove settings in between, right? You can't change the playback speed of the recorder to actually mimic the shuffle. So um, you actually want to re-trigger more often like four times so you catch all the small little um, offsets of the shuffle so you can use the amplifier to actually get the self-resonating feedback you can also bring in here then a low cut Let's say uh, or low pass and high pass. <laughs> Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> um, so we can kind of emulate here a delay, a one device with the feedback and this low cut and low cut and high cut and so on. So now you can hear the delay or the echo of this is kind of shuffled a little bit. Okay, so with this you get a delay tab that's a bit unusual, that kind of supports the groove or supports your shuffle setting here, your global shuffle setting. Uh, it's not hard to set up, it's just a recorder here with a feedback loop and a bit of um, scalar magic. Um, and yeah, it's maybe an option for you if you want to make groovy or funky tunes uh, and you want to use delays. Um, and with this here, basically, you have a delay that's, that uses the global shuffle setting, which is interesting and pretty unusual, I, I would say. So try, give this a try here, try it out, and maybe give me feedback if you kind of like this idea. Uh, if you have some questions, let me know, of course. I put this uh, patch here in the description below so you can download it from my GitHub. Um, yeah, leave a like if you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.